Now I will have a short discussion of the anomalous Zeeman effect. For a little bit more detailed explanation, I'm going to give a link to a, another video that I strongly recommend that you watch. So uh, for the total angular uh, momentum quantum number j and uh, the corresponding mj value, Uh, we have for the magnetic dipole moment in the z direction in the axis of the magnetic field uh, minus lambda factor g Bohr magneton times m sub j. Now this lambda factor uh, g is actually modified when we have the coupling between the spin and orbital angular momenta uh, it's j j plus one plus total spin s s plus one minus total orbital angular momentum l l plus one quantum number divided by two j j plus one this is the lambda factor And now you can see that the uh, lambda factor will be for s equals to uh, zero, you will have j is equal to l, gives a lambda factor of one, s equals one, and j is equal to uh, zero, would give you uh, j is equal to s. Uh, s sorry, uh, l equals to zero j is equal to s, uh, would give you a lambda factor of uh, 2. So uh, m sub j values, remember, are in the range uh, minus j minus j plus 1 to j minus 1 j. It's the quantum number that represents projection the projection of J to the field axis okay so we have to keep in mind that the total magnetic moment is minus G, G Bohr magneton M sub J uh, so when s is equal to 0, j is equal to l, uh, we have uh, in the normal Zeeman effect uh, equal splitting between energy levels. And when uh, s is non-zero, we have in general, the anomalous Zeeman effect. So the amount of splitting delta E between energy levels would be equal to minus mu zero mzh because of G dependence on both L and S leads to unequal splittings of the energy levels. So here is a demonstration when we have capital L equals 1, S equals 1 half, J is equal to 1 half, and capital L equals 2, S is equal to 1 half, J is equal to 3 half. You can see that the lambda factor is changing for uh, two different energy levels at h is equal to zero we see unequal splitting so we have uh, a different uh, splitting here so this one um, basically when we say unequal splitting we're talking about the splitting here and the splitting here 
if I call this delta E1, if I call this delta E2, delta E1 is not equal to delta E2. So we have unequal splittings in the energy levels in the presence of a magnetic field. So we have two important uh, remarks about this. So the first remark is that for electron transitions between these uh, created uh, energy levels, allowed transitions, there are these selection rules in quantum mechanics, uh, will correspond to a change in total uh, magnetic quantum number m sub j equals to zero. This gives us linearly polarized uh, light and delta mj can be also plus or a minus one uh, right circularly polarized or left circularly polarized light will, will will be given and why do we have this this is a manifestation of uh, angular momentum conservation So we see that uh, these transitions between energy levels give two different types of polarization for light, linearly polarized and circularly polarized. Another remark is that uh, there is an effect called passion back effect. Passion back effect is basically in the presence of a strong magnetic field we have decoupling between spin and orbital angular momenta decouple and uh, this leads to a switching back to normal Zeeman effect which means you don't calculate a Landa factor for the total J you have the separate Landa factors for orbital and spin angular momenta so we decouple spin and orbital angular momenta by applying a strong magnetic field that's the passion back effect okay so what we need to know uh, is uh, in the presence of, uh, when we have a total spin angular uh, momentum quantum number, capital S non-zero, we have a Landa factor that depends on both S and L, and that gives us unequal splitting in the energy levels in the presence of a magnetic field. The magnetic moment is then calculated by minus G Bohr magneton M sub J, and if you're wondering the magnitude of the uh, magnetic dipole moment, this would also be given by G Bohr magneton square root J, J plus one. So this is also true. And the lambda factor is calculated as one plus the ratio of J, J plus one plus SS plus one minus LL plus one to two J, J plus one. And you can verify that when S is 0, J is equal to L, you have 1. When L is equal to 0, J is equal to S, we have 2. And uh, the corresponding magnetic quantum number varies between minus J and plus J. Now, uh, when we have this anomalous Zeeman effect and we look at the transitions between uh, levels, the electron transitions between energy levels, uh, only those transitions that have delta mj equals to zero or plus or minus one are allowed. This is a angular momentum conservation criterion. If delta mj is zero, we have linearly polarized light emitted. If it's plus or minus one, we have circularly polarized light emitted. And the anomalous Zeeman effect can be switched back to normal Zeeman effect in the presence of a very strong magnetic field.